Hello and welcome to Law and More. I am Farah Mauji and I'm delighted to be joined by a senior associate at IBB Law, Jasmine Dillon. Hello Jasmine. Hi Farah. So can we start by you giving us a brief overview of the recent changes in immigration law and how they've come about? So the landscape of UK immigration has changed quite a bit over sort of the last couple of years. Um, This was triggered mainly by Brexit, at which point there was a big overhaul in the UK immigration system and new routes were introduced, old ones were discontinued and a points-based immigration system was introduced. Of course, the key change brought about by Brexit was that free movement within the European Union ended on the 31st of December 2020. And now EU citizens need to apply for entry clearance to come to the UK, just like other nationals from across the world. The EU settlement scheme was, of course, um, introduced to give those EU citizens already in the UK a chance to secure their status in the UK in anticipation of the end of free movement. But this was very much... um, sort of transitional in nature Um, and even beyond Brexit there were some even further changes some quite significant changes to the routes which took place just earlier this year and then there have also been some further changes to the various application processes themselves and there is more to come. So focusing on corporate immigration what is the starting point for businesses when they are considering engaging migrant workers in the UK? Um, What preliminary issues should businesses consider? Okay, so when a company is considering recruiting from the um, international talent pool, then the first thing they would generally need to secure is a sponsor license. And then when it comes to deciding which visa to apply for, there are, as you say, some preliminary issues to consider before actually making a decision on that. So I'd say the first thing to consider generally is is the time. So how long will the migrant worker be required to work in the UK? Um Some visas can't be extended indefinitely and don't lead to settlement, so their planned length of time in the UK is something that's quite important to know. Um, Secondly, it would be good to think about settlement. So is it important that any permission to work in the UK should count towards that migrant worker's potential to settle in the UK, which is also known as indefinite leave to remain, or ILR in short? Um, The reason this is important is because time spent in the UK under certain categories don't count towards a five-year period of continuous residence needed to obtain ILR. So if settlement is a deal-breaker for the migrant worker, then we'd need to choose an immigration route which does lead to settlement. Uh, the next thing to think about is is the role. So what role is the individual carrying out or what role will they be carrying out when they are in the UK? How skilled is the role and what salary will the role attract? Um, and b- simply because sponsored immigration categories do have certain minimum skill and, and salary requirements. Um, English language is another thing to consider. So some routes have minimum English language requirements. Uh, switching is important as well so we need to ask ourselves the question as to whether the migrant worker would need to make a visa application from outside the UK or are they already in the UK and seeking to switch immigration routes in in country Um, if they are in the UK we need to ask whether an in-country switch is permitted under the immigration rules because there are some visa categories from which you you cannot switch. And then lastly, we need to consider whether the migrant will be employed to work in the UK or are they just going to be simply visiting the UK on on business as as more of a short-term thing. If the latter, then you may want to consider just applying using a simple visitor visa. What is generally the most common or popular immigration route which businesses choose for their migrant workers? And could you tell us more about that? I'd say the skilled worker route, uh, previously known as a tier two general visa. It's a popular route because it's a relatively straightforward one. Um, And so essentially a worker can arrive in the UK from abroad to undertake employment for a UK company which holds a sponsor license. So it's your classic straightforward immigration scenario, really. Um, I believe it's popular because the time spent on the skilled worker visa can lead to settlement and many migrant workers are able to satisfy the eligibility requirements for this route and there are lots of different occupations which the skilled worker route recognises. So there is a minimum salary requirement for this route but it's not unattainably high. There is also a minimum skill level for the visa but that's A level or equivalent. There is an English language requirement um, and in terms of duration... Um, the skilled worker visa can be granted for up to five years and 14 days. 
Dependents are permitted under this visa um, and the route does lead to settlement. So once the migrant and their dependents, if any, are approaching five years stay in the UK on their visas, they are then eligible to apply for indefinite leave to remain. Typically, they would then have to remain in the UK for a further 12 months from having been granted indefinite leave to remain, after which they could apply for British citizenship and obtain a British passport. What is the interplay between this skilled worker visa route and the intra-company transfer visa? So the intra-company transfer visa, known as ICT for short, has now actually been relabeled and it's now called the Senior or Specialist Worker Visa. And that visa sits as one of the routes under the umbrella Global Business Mobility Routes. Um, What I'll do is I'll probably gloss over the details of this visa slightly because in reality most businesses are likely to opt for the skilled worker visa over this one. So so very briefly, it is a sponsored route um, and the migrant must be employed in the overseas business in the sponsor group at the point they apply. The 12-month service overseas is needed unless they're classed as a high earner. Um, There is a minimum salary requirement for this route, but it is higher than the skilled worker visa at at £42,000 a year. Uh, The skill level for this visa is also higher than that of the the skilled worker visa. Um, So the skill level for this one is graduate level or equivalent. There is no English language requirement, but the route does not lead to settlement. So just as by way of a summary, in my view, this visa route has more onerous eligibility requirements than the skilled worker visa, yet it has the disadvantage that the time spent on this visa does not count towards settlement. So one key advantage in this visa route is that there is no English language requirement. So if the migrant worker does not know English to an intermediate level, then they can still apply for this visa, whereas they wouldn't be able to apply for the the skilled worker visa. What about overseas companies wishing to expand into the UK for the first time, where, for example, there is no UK presence? So for that, I would consider a UK expansion worker visa. This UK expansion worker visa allows senior managers and specialist employees to come to the UK to undertake temporary work concerning um, expanding the business for their overseas employer. Now, this route can only be used where the business has no trading presence in the UK, um, but a UK footprint must have been established from overseas. So the company must have already been incorporated in the UK, but it must not be trading at the point of actually applying for this visa. Um, So again, just a brief overview of this route. It is a sponsored route. Um, The the applicant must must have been employed overseas by the sponsor group with 12-month service unless they're a high earner, which is classed as £73,900 and above. Um, Full-time work is permitted under this visa, only full-time. There is a minimum salary requirement of 42k a year or the going rate, and the the skill level is graduate and equivalent. So really, this route is for more sort of senior, senior employees. There is no English language requirement, um, but in terms of duration, the worker can stay for up to two years in the UK under this visa. So in these two years, the worker's job essentially is to get the UK company up and trading, and then they would have to leave the UK after the two years. Alternatively, if the worker wanted to stay in the UK, then they could, within those two years, apply for a sponsor licence for the UK company and then do an in-country switch to perhaps a skilled worker visa to remain in the UK long term. And of course, remember that the skilled worker visa does lead to settlement. And whether or not the UK expansion worker stays, the UK company would then be free to recruit British or settled workers there. Um, And if the UK company secures a sponsor licence, it would then be able to recruit other migrant workers from across the globe, not just the UK expansion worker visa. Um, And just a a couple of final points that dependents are permitted under this visa, but unfortunately, the time spent on this visa does not count towards settlement. But as I think we mentioned earlier, the migrant worker can switch to the skilled worker visa from that visa, which does lead to settlement. Uh, What about for short term assignments in the UK, for example, business trips? So so there are many temporary work options under the global mobility routes, but quite often for simple business trips, as you've just said, many businesses opt for sending workers to the UK just on visitor visas. And not all nationalities even need to apply for a visitor visa. But for those who do, it's generally more cost effective to apply for a visitor visa compared to sort of the longer term work visas. So individuals on a visitor visa do, however, need to satisfy the caseworker at the home office that they are a genuine visitor. 
Um, and that means that they have to provide some form of evidence or that they will leave the UK at the end of their visit, um, that they won't live in the UK for extended periods of time through frequent or successive visits or make the UK their main home. Um, they mustn't undertake any prohibited activities and they must have sufficient funds to cover all reasonable costs in relation to their visit without having to work or access public funds. Um, in terms of what the actual um, worker can do under the standard visitor visa, there's quite a, a wide range of permitted business activities that they can do. And the, um, for more information, the immigration routes stipulate exactly what those activities are. And lastly, what about family members of migrant workers? What is the extent of their right to accompany the worker? Yeah, so of course there will be some migrant workers who have families and often those dependent family members will accompany the main applicant to the UK. A dependent is defined as the main applicant's husband, wife, civil partner, unmarried partner, and it includes children under 18 or children over 18 if they're already in the UK as the dependent. In terms of their ability to accompany the worker, um, yes, they are generally able to accompany them and they are typically able to work in the UK in their own right, save for just a very few and limited job roles. And the length of the dependents' leave in the UK will generally be granted in line with the main applicant's leave. Thanks, Jasmine. That was great. Thanks, Farah. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Law & More. If you'd like to find out about IBB, please visit ibblaw.co.uk. 